Here's how you can experience the real Outback Australia. Desert mountains, remote highways, out of the way scenery, awesome western sunsets. How about the plains of Bulia or Lake Lindara, spectacular sinkholes? Well, here's how you can get to do just that and see everything. G'day. I'm Lyle, and behind the camera is the child bride Trish. Now if you've thought about travelling around Australia in your own off-road caravan, and your reliable four-wheel drive to tow it with, this rig that Trish and I have used as our home for the last seven years might just be right for you. It's a serious off-road caravan, it'll go wherever you want to go, and when you want to drop it, you can actually live out of the back of the Toyota, and continue further on into the really rugged country. That vehicle and this has been our home for the last seven years, as I've said. So you, and it's been 100% reliable. It's a Spinifex. Now we bought the Spinifex after oh many years on the road with other caravans, and none of them match up to this one. This one has been almost trouble-free. Nothing major has broken. We don't expect anything major to break. And it's the same with the Land Cruiser. There's a dealer everywhere. This. This Land Cruiser has been built, we got it built specially and modified to tow that particular caravan. So before you rush out and buy a caravan, there's a couple of other things you need to know, if you don't already. There's a page on Facebook called Lemon Caravans and RVs, and there's some absolutely petrifying stories in there of people who bought sometimes off-road vans, supposed off-road vans and they've rotted out, or they've broken chassis, or suspensions have broken, all sorts of things have gone wrong, and the manufacturers have refused to fix it. Not so with Spinifex, and with the Toyotas. There's dealers everywhere, and they'll fix them, and Spinifex will give you any help that you want to know, but they're as robust as hell. So that's something for you to think about before you decide what you're going to do, and travelling around Australia. But if you are considering it, it's probably worth your while to come and have a look at this. Welcome to the back of our life support system. We had the 100 series chopped off here. It's had, it's got an 8 inch chassis now. Airbag fully self leveling airbags all around, disc brakes all around. The inside is very, very practical. You've got a mezzanine floor for want of a better word. It's all insulated. There's 12 volts running right down through it. There's cupboards that'll slide in and out, vast amount of storage space here, more storage space over there, there's a fridge slide that side, and there's two more slide out boxes that side. But that's not all, as somebody famous once said. On the roof, there's a 125 watt solar panel, which feeds power, and I can't walk out of the frame right now, down through that cable to a DC to DC charger under the bonnet. That charges the 12 volt starter battery, then it automatically goes over to the spare battery when that battery needs current. So you can leave your fridge plugged in 24-7, long as the sun, you never have to worry about it. And it will start every time you come out. It's the front of the truck. You've got a, a genuine Toyota bull bar. There's a winch in there. It, it's actually behind the number plate. There's a range of spotlights, two extreme long distance ones. The ones on the edges, the little uh, tiny little flat ones, there to catch roos off on the edge. There's a UHF antenna, and there's also a telephone antenna, perchance you want to use your phone in your, in your car. And down there, hidden behind the pillar, is an Anderson plug. That takes power if you wish you can you can plug a solar panel into that and that'll take power up to a controller solar controller which we have installed it was it's a secondary method of charging the battery right here's the heart of the truck the uh, proven 4.2 litre turbo diesel with an intercooler we have a snorkel so it sniffs clean air not air from under the mud guards it's in pretty much showroom condition there's a DP chip in there, which takes our torque up to the middle ranges of uh, oh, about 520 Newton meters. So this thing pulls quite well. Over the back, earlier there I mentioned a little, uh, a little connection down here for solar power. 
and there's a solar controller up the back that feeds to that and as a backup you can feed into your spare battery. Also inside, and I'm going to show you in a minute, the solar power comes off the roof and feeds into a DC to DC charger inside which splits the batteries, pushes the power to whichever one needs it, uh, and then allows the solar panel to charge up while you're not using the truck. There are so many things in here I just don't know where to start but let's start with some of the smaller ones. This thing has a HUD. There's a display up here, heads up display it's called. The speedo is displayed in the windscreen. We've got a Taconcha brake controller here. This is a pretty fancy one. This allows us to really balance the, the brake power to the caravan. We can set this up so the, the, the brake pedal will treat the caravan as if it's heavier than the truck. So the, the van will always stay behind us. That's your reversing camera, so you can look down on the, your coupling, or you can push a button and you can look out the back of the van. We have a, a dash cam, so you can record what the heck's going on around you. We've changed the radio, we've put a modern radio in, which talks to your iPhones, there's a, there's a microphone up here. We have a UHF built in, 80 channel. That battery charger splitter that I was talking to you earlier, it has a little dial here which tells us the voltage in each of our batteries and the charging rate, whether it's coming off the solar or from the vehicle. And that battery charger, which you probably can't see, is bolted to a piece of plastic on the side wall here. We didn't want to have it underneath the bonnet. It's too damn hot. We burnt one out there once. So this, this one works brilliantly. That takes the power from, say, from the sun straight to the starter battery. When the starter battery is healthy, it puts it onto the other battery. And then the power goes further back to the batteries in the van and threw another booster up there. So all in told, you've got a pretty sophisticated system in here as well as quite a range of extra 12 volt outlets. Life in here can be pretty good. This is the business end. This is where the Toyota hitches to the car and this is the critical stuff when you're traveling. We've got a six ton Reese hitch and a six ton Mac hitch which join. This, this one's pretty simple. You could just, this large extension here just slides straight into there, goes clunk and it's hooked. And you can see, see it all from the reversing camera as you're coming back. So that hitching up is really, really easy with this. The reason we have the six tons capability is we only tow three and a half tons of that. And this is, we only load that to three and a half. But if we're on rough roads, at least we've got some resilience there. We know that we haven't stretched everything to its limits. Now you're required to have chains that are capable of stopping the, holding the van steady if it comes adrift. Those chains are supposed to be at least, in capability, at least equal to the weight of the caravan. Our, ton, our chains are lifting chains, they're rated at five and a half tonnes. The uh, D-shackles and the hammer locks are rated at about 4.7, that's each side. So you've got tonnes of re uh, reserve there. We haven't allowed the chains to be welded to the chassis. The welding chains crystallises them and they can become weak. So Spinifex are making these up now for all their heavy vans and you just hammer lock them on. So at this end of it, all our cabling is 12 volt charging for the batteries in the van. The, the normal, oh, that's a, that's a WASA cable for the, for the video at the back. And that's just your normal large pin plug. Your breakaway, uh, your weight distribution hitches, we're firm fans of those. Even though this thing's got self-leveling airbags at the back, if you travel without the weight distribu distribution hitches with the 3,500 on here, you can feel it. You know, it lifts a little bit of the front. So we travel with those. Uh, what else have we got here? We've got the handbrake, the breakaway, and just a, a reasonably new uh, caravan jack. Spare tyres, two spare tyres because you've got so many wheels there. These tyres on the truck are all interchangeable with those on the caravan because we like to have that reserve in everything. There's nothing worse than finding you. And we have seen a bloke. We found a bloke on the, on the plenty once that he had only three, three tyres left on his caravan, nothing he can use on the Toyota. He was buggered. So we have enough to, to handle almost anything. Child bride, testing out the water pump. 
There's a 12 volt pump in there and a 50 litre tank underneath. Well this is the caravan. It's a 2010 Spinifex Caravan Outback Explorer. It's totally self-contained with everything you could want. The frame is aluminium, so there's no wood rot ever going to bother you. Even if it does leak, and it's not likely to leak, it hasn't leaked in all the years we've had it. The suspension is disc brakes and self-leveling vehicle components, airbags, well tried and proven by a reputable manufacturer. The chassis is two four-inch laminated steel beams and then hot dipped. And there's a reason they're using that because it's far more robust than the straight six. We have now an eight inch chassis on this one. There's a seven foot drawbar on this which makes turning a lot easier. The inside of the van is equipped with everything you could possibly want. There's about 400 watts of solar panel. There's 400 amp hours of deep cycle batteries inside. There's an automatic inverter gener uh, uh, charger. So there's 240 volts inside, wherever you want. There's all the water you can want. There's even a dedicated drinking tank with its own pump. So you can really control the quality of your water. Uh, it's climate controlled. It has a diesel heater, which doesn't need 240 to run. So you can be an absolute comfort in the freezing weather without running the generator or being plugged in. This caravan for us has provided everything we need. And if you're interested in seeing a bit of off-road and living off the grid, this could very well suit you. While we're down this end of the uh, truck, on the front of the van, with this was made, it came with it, that stops the rocks from bouncing back up there. If you've got a window at the back there, trust me, on the rough country, you're going to break it. You don't have it with this truck. Now, they're not just mud flaps hanging off the bottom of that. We did some early testing with these things, and we fitted a small set, and we found that the tyre pressure on that side, that's the right-hand side of the van, was two to three pounds higher while we were travelling than on the other side. So we made bigger mud flaps. The exhaust comes out this side, see? So the bigger mud flaps stop the heat from the exhaust, which stop those tyres getting hotter. So now the tyres stay at the same pressure. Now on the other side of this thing, you probably can't see it from there, is a little box that houses the pressure pump for the electric over hydraulic brakes. That takes the 12 volt, you put your foot on the brake, that pump goes bzzz, and that pumps hydraulic fluid to the disc brakes because you just can't get enough power out of electricity to put disc brakes on. And, and there are two jerry can holders here as well. One holds diesel, which is spare diesel for here. The other one holds petrol for our, our little Honda generator. Right, under these two bonnets are the electronics. There's three uh, deep cycle 12 volt batteries. There's a multi plus compact uh, 70 amp charger with a 1600 watt inverter. Now that's a very big charger but you've got a very big battery bank so that tops it up very quickly. But that's an automatic charger so if you're hooked up to the power and the power goes off nobody inside will notice. Now we take the 12 volts from the car to charge the batteries but if you do that just straight 12 volts from the back of the car you're never going to get these charged. So we've taken the 12 volts from the battery and we've stuck it up the backside of a 12 volt, 12 volt DC charger and that can stick 14 volts into these. Over this side you've got some hoses and there's another ex exterior hose we're going to give you. These are the controls for the for the uh, air airbag system, you can switch them on, you can level them up, and if the van's not level, you can flick a switch and it'll, it'll level up. Uh, it'll come with a jack, and because of all the airbags and the pumps, you've got air hoses, everything you need to blow up or deflate your tires. Pretty, that doesn't go with it. Right? That's, that, that's ours and the tools, but they, they stay with us. All right, let's have a look around the rest of the outside of the van. This is our onboard toilet. Now most toilets, you have to use chemicals, this one doesn't. This, this block in here contains a little fan and a charcoal filter and when you sit down on the loo, it opens a trapdoor and air gets sucked in through there and outside and that acts like a sewage plant. I've managed sewage plants, same principle. Air eats the stuff. This is a bit different because there's your hose and a little 12 volt lead and it goes into the top of the tank. And when you need to change it, you pull it out and pull a bung in it. 
and there's no smell and you don't have to buy chemicals. So there you go. It's called a SOG, S-O-G. It's a French name. Don't know what it stands for, but I can tell you it works. Right, a little bit further down from the loo, you've got your gas, electric, hot water system. We've recently replaced the hot water system in that. And we put this on the outside so the paint doesn't burn from the heat. You've got three water tanks. That one's no longer as a tank. We've converted that into a grey water tank. And that's your water in when you hooked up to the town supply. Out here is an interesting little thing that Steve put on. It's a 12 volt Anderson plug under that. So you can draw power from your batteries to, to run pumps or whatever the heck you want to do. We use it to pump water from rivers when we need to replenish our water. Let's go on further. There's a generator box down the back. We'll have a look at that. Now hidden inside this box, which was created especially for this, is the 2 kVA generator. Not going with the van unless you want to make me some special offer with it. But this thing is totally sealed, so there's no fumes go up inside, and it's dustproof from the outside. But if you're considering a generator, you may want to consider, no, I'd suggest, I'd actually recommend that you buy a Honda. You please, you do not need to go out and buy those two and a half, 2.7, three kVA monsters that people are going to try and sell you. This, too, will run everything on this caravan. Not all at once, but it'll run the air conditioner for 24-7. It'll run the battery charger separately, but it'll, it'll do everything else. It'll run the microwave and you can lift it. If you're my age, 70 or 75, this 25 kilograms seems to get a bit heavier as you get older. Now we've done a movie on this. We bought whole heaps of little generators and run them. That's probably the most reliable, most economical, and you can carry the damn thing. Right, while we're down the back end of the caravan, have a look at this. We've got a chassis extension serving to support the, there's two spare tyres, and all the same size as the rest. This extension, this, this, this bumper bar, is not just clipped on like most other vans. This is actually part of the chassis. It's been the same piece all the way through. So that it's, it's, it's integral to the support of the whole caravan. On the back of it, we've got the two tyres, as we mentioned. Trish and I have mounted some detergents, one for washing hands and one for washing dishes. And we've also put an extension to the drinking water tap back here because we do most of our cooking outside here. And that's so handy for washing hands and washing up dishes. Just general living. Now we're going to have a look. Oh no, look, before we go any further, there's another boot just here. And that's an extension of the generator boot on the other side. It's totally sealed off from the generator boot, but you can fit a vast amount of stuff in there. It goes underneath the bed. Let's move on. We have a look at the TV and the tables and that stuff down there. Right uh, on the outside, on the side where you do most, mostly do your living, there's a drop down table and your outside TV and power outlets. It's got TV, uh, satellite TV, and broadcast TV, and 12 volts, and 240 volts, and all the usual stuff you're ever going to need for this side of the caravan. So let's continue. We'll have a look at the suspension next. I'll show you the chassis. Let's talk about this marvellous vehicle components Cruise Master airbag suspension. You can't see it from that angle, but it's under there. It's independent, shock absorber and airbags. No springs, this is just totally airbags like the truck. There's no springs on any of these vehicles. But that, sus that suspension is rated to 4.2 tonnes. The van, there's no problem in loading this thing for three and a half tonnes, and we do for the safe, for sake of economy. So you've got 2.8 tonnes uh, and up to 3.5 so you've got about 700 kilograms of load you can carry with this this van. Let's talk about the chassis. The chassis is most chassis are four inch and this the off-road vans they go to six and if you get the Chinese ones they're probably going to have really thin steel. This one's got two four inch layers laminated and hot dipped so it's extra robust and I know I was there when it was built and it was built with a 20 mil curve up, up, so it was built that way. So when the load goes on, it comes level, so it won't go down. So this is a very well constructed hot dip, and the hot dip galvanizing means that it doesn't chip. There's lots of people are going to sell you chassis that'll tell you, oh, they're galvanized. It's painted or sprayed on. It chips, it rusts, and the, the only van I've seen break a drawbar was one that was painted on and nobody bothered about the inside, it rusted. 
So that's the safest way because it's hot dipped on the inside. Let's talk about the wheels. The wheels are interchangeable with the truck. The yellow things are wheel nut indicators. You can't get on a mine site unless you have these. You set them with the pointer pointed one direction and if a wheel nut comes loose, you'll get an indicator. It only happened to us once and we've tightened up our procedures since then. And these are little transmitters that will transmit the tyre pressure to a monitor in the car. So if the tyre pressure start to go down before the tyre blows, they will send an indicator, I'll get a beep and we'll get a warning. So if you buy the two, that comes with it. Let's go and have a look at the rest of the truck. The van's quite high, there's four steps up into it but they're easily done. And we don't have a double fold up step because that just gets in the way. Galvanised checker plate there, so it doesn't mark easily. In that little box underneath we'll show you later, but there's the uh, hot water system, the diesel heater, uh, and the, uh, yeah, a lot of electronics, and the water pumps. That is the 240 litre 12 volt compressor fridge, an absolutely magnificent fridge if you're travelling anywhere where it's a bit hot. Okay, time to talk about fridges and gauges. It's the fridge compartment. This is a Vitrofrigo 12 volt 240 litre fridge and freezer. It's not a three way. This thing's hooked permanently to the 12 volt batteries. It will maintain your fridge temperature regardless at less than 5 degrees and keep this the freezer compartment at about uh, minus 18 regardless and the batteries are charged by the solar panels on the roof they don't have to be level it doesn't make any noise it'll just putter on in 12 years we've been using Vitra Frigos we've had one failure and that cost $150 for a new thermostat or something right out here's the gauges so you can monitor what's going on inside the van there's a temperature gauge up here which measures the outside temperature, also the temperature inside the freezer. We keep that at minus 20 or 18 or thereabouts. This governs how much power comes in from your generator if you're running a generator or if you're dirty sure power. If you're not sure of the power, you can dial it back a bit so nothing here overloads it. This tells us how much power we're getting out of the sun, how much power we've used. It monitors every bit of power that goes in and out of this van. And just by pushing the buttons, you can check the level of the batteries and all that sort of stuff. Water gauges tell us how much water we've got. Now we have three tanks, but we've still got a gauge on the on the grey water tank. That last one is our drinking water tank, which is a separate pump, separate tank. It's independent. This one tells what the temperature is inside the fridge, and that'll stay below five. If it's above five, you could be having some trouble. Up here, we control the uh, hot water system, which runs on gas or electricity if you're plugged in. Switches for the pumps. This is the controller for the diesel heater. You can set it so that it'll automatically come on at four or five in the morning if you want to and turn off an hour later when it reaches the temperature. And we've got the radio and this thing is the fan and the lights for down there. That's this control panel. Right, we'll see what's underneath the fridge. All right, this is a shot from underneath the fridge. You've got the drinking water pump on your right and on your left is the general purpose pump. There's a hot water system behind and a diesel heater on the left and a few electronics running around inside. Now that pump on the left is the latest model we've put on. It's silent. It's very flexibly mounted and we've made it even more so by using those silver long hoses. So there's no direct vibrating connection with the ground. It's really hard to tell that that pump's working. Stove and oven slide out, the child by protects everything with things to stop it marking. And a griller, a slide out and a series of burners on the top. The storage space under here and that's the diesel heater outlet. It sucks the air from here, it heats it and squirts it back out into the, into the air. And th that can take the inside uh, temperature of the caravan from We've, we've moved it from minus 5 to about 16 or 17 degrees in 20 minutes with no 240 volt power and using 120 mils of diesel, that's that much, per hour. Very economical. Alright, now let's have a look at the top of the stove. Okay, there's your stove top. You've got three gas burners, two big ones, one small one, and in case you ever get stuck, there's a power. 
This is one of the new translucent doors we put in. There's the loo. It's a ceramic bowl. What are we talking loos? This one doesn't need chemicals. There's a fan in there that injects air over the matter inside and it breaks it down just like a sewage plant. And a little further in there's a washing machine and a hand basin and all the storage space for your missus's gear and stuff like that. Very practical with a fan and a window, well ventilated. Right next door is the shower and we got rid of the wooden doors and put these translucent ones on and the floor is a little bit different from the conventional van that is propeller plate, highly polished, very waterproof and doesn't crack. And we've had vans that have cracked the fiberglass. The usual shower but it's got a, a fan and a vent in the roof and a window, it's well ventilated. Right, uh, this is your living space. You come to the top of the stairs and turn right and you've got this beautiful practical fold-out table which allows tons of space when it's folded back in. This upholstery, we took this back to the manufacturer. This, this is a fabric that was put on here nine years ago and he couldn't fault it, the manufacturer. So he put new foam in it but that's exactly the same fabric that was put on when the van was manufactured. And listen, if you're thinking about getting leather or pseudo leather, it looks classy. You put your backside on it in the hot weather and you're going to sweat or you're going to get a blister. So this is pretty practical stuff. Have a look further down. We've got white everywhere now. Some 18 months ago, Trish and I spent about twenty odd thousand dollars upgrading the inside of this van. We replaced the ceiling because the original one was getting a bit saggy from so many years in the sun. We put a, a new air conditioner in. We replaced all the doors and drawers, which were drab wood. We thought they were drab anyway. That was the fashion back then, with all this new full gloss white stuff. And it looks a whole lot better, far, far more modern. The bed is, most, most beds are six foot one long, and they say they're queen. This one is six foot 10. It was made especially for us. That mattress won't go with it. We'll give you another mattress because that mattress has been built just especially for Trish and me with our various weights. There's a television. There's 240 volts and 12 volts. This thing's got an automatic inverter charger. So there's 240 volts through the here all the time if you want to turn it on. There's absolutely nothing you could want for. You can control the airflow because over the, over the bed there's a fantastic hatch with a 12 volt fan. So if you're not hooked up to power, you can have the fan running to blow air on you or you can start another fan down the other end and you can have air running through. It's pretty versatile. You'll actually enjoy this. Very practical. <laughs> Sorry getting the bad side of my face. This is what happens when you spend too much time in the sun. Anyway, enough of that stuff. An office, you say. Who the hell would put an office in a caravan? Well, we're journos. We needed the space. We tried putting the computer on the tables and it just didn't work. So we had Steve build this into this, build this caravan around this office. Now, in this corner, tons of room for it, and we can put the printer up there. And there's TV, satellite TV, there's an antenna outside with a cable to here that brings the broadband in. You've got 12 volts and 240 volts. So it doesn't matter what you want, it's here. You've got a great range of fans. There's this one of the Sirocco's up there which uses 0.4 of an amp. We've got another fantastic hatch here which will bring light and you can have air in or air out. And we've recently got rid of the wooden doors on the shower and the toilet and we've replaced them with that at smoky glass and it's allowed a lot more light in here. But if you don't want to use this as an office, it's a fantastic change room. But it's, it's been wonderful for us and you might find it equally as useful. Okay, well that about sums up this magnificent caravan and the Toyota, which were our home for the last seven years or even more. I'm now living in, or Trish and I are now living in a house and it's very comfortable but I can tell you that I'd much rather be living here because I've become really used to this environment and it's just so convenient. You know, I've got an office there, a loo, shower, everything's within a couple of steps. It's climate controlled. I'm very happy to stay in it. But if you want a serious, well, before we go to that, before we go to that, we're both 60, 75 and 76 and we probably need to go to a lighter caravan. 
So if you want a serious off-road caravan that's reliable, that's backed up by a manufacturer who has some ethics, a Spinifex are up there with Bush Tracker and Kedron. No wood frame vans, either of them, and they nearly all use proper compressor fridges. To replace this would cost about 150 to 160,000. The cheapest late model Spinifex I can find on the internet was a 2012 model, uh, the asking price of 80,000, but it had bunks, not that I'm knocking bunks, this one doesn't have bunks, and it had uh, woodwork drawers. It didn't have this, well, it had the standard old woodwork. Comparison with ours, this van has a separate chair and toilet down there, you've seen the movies of that. It's got the office, which is just over the road there, and it were a change room, second TV, it were a TV room, it's pretty well equipped down that end of the van. Plus this modern gloss interior with everything new inside at a cost of 20 something thousand, as I keep telling you. It's $69,000, that's all we're asking for this, because it, we needed to go to a good home. It's in absolutely showroom condition. It will come with as much handover as you require. We'll spend all the time in the world with you, showing you how to work the, the various systems in the van. If you're new to caravanning, we'll spend even more time with you. Even just learning how to roll out the awning takes some practice. We'll help you even with reversing, because of something Trish and I used to teach when we were managing and looking after caravans. And we've been doing that for about 12 years, caravan parks all over the country. The Toyota. Ours is a 2006 model, and I forget how many, five or six years ago, we spent 50,000 modifying it to tow this van and to live our lifestyle. I, f I can find a 2006 model on the internet with about a quarter million kilometres. Ours has only done 215,000, but that one is $50,000. So this expedition one of ours, in showroom condition, is pretty good buying, we think, at 65,000. It's got a winch, it's got lights, it's got everything you need to tow this or even to live comfortably off-road. Both, as I said, are in showroom condition. So, both, if you want to take both, it's 129,000. Now that's a saving of 5,000 if you bought them separately. So you've got any questions, please feel free to email us, contact us. We'll talk to you about whatever you want to talk about. If any of you ladies have any questions to ask Trish, about living in a caravan like this. She'll be only too happy to sit down and yarn with you till the cows come home so you feel quite satisfied. So that's about it. It's your decision to make. We're just making the offer to you. So thanks for checking us out and Merry Christmas to you all and we'll look forward to seeing you out on the road there somewhere. Cheers now.